Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be comparing the Holosun 507 ACSS Vulcan uh, to the Holosun 507C. This is the one with the 32 m way circle. Uh, this is the one with the 10 m way chevron uh, that has that big 250 m way circle around it. Uh, and the idea with this, uh, with this one is that when you have it at full extension, uh, the the big circle is um, at the edges of your glass so that you cannot see it and the chevrons in the middle if you're off a little bit the edge of the circle will drive you to the center uh, or give you an indication of where the center is so you can find your chevron okay so uh, I've been testing this out for about I don't know, a week and a half now uh, initially I wasn't sure which which was the better one I have made up my mind uh, because I've got the 507 ACSS on this G26 that I'm carrying, uh, it is the, uh, you know, I have determined that it is the better optic uh, uh, for carry. Um, what I want to do today is I want to demonstrate, um, you know, uh, what it looks like at night. Oh, right now it's starting to get dark, so it's low light. <laughs> uh, so first let me talk about the brightness setting. Um, you know, both of these optics have, uh, uh, are solar powered, and then they have, uh, if you're in solar power mode, you also have auto adjust. The problem with auto adjust is if you're in a shady area shooting towards a bright area or from a dim area shooting into a more well lit area, uh, the sensor is looking up, it sees that it's not that it's not as bright and it lowers it. Meanwhile, if you're shooting towards a brighter area, you know, now you can't see it. You know, your, your, your reticle is going to wash out because it's at a lower setting. So um, what I have found is the best thing to do is to keep your uh, keep your your your, your reticle at sunny day brightness this way you know that you're always going to be able to see it under all conditions so now the concern becomes well what about at low you know in a shady area or in low light or at night okay um is it going to be overpowering with rifles it tends to become more of an issue if the reticle is too bright because typically you know you're shooting at you know especially if we're shooting at a smaller bullseye at further distance uh it's very you know it's very easy for the um, for the, uh, the the bright reticle to overpower it, um, what I what I found in in carrying this uh, this this 507 is because you're typically shooting at a man-sized target at closer distances, it was less of an issue. All right, uh, and I'll show you guys what I mean. Right now, this is set to daylight brightness. Right, I have it on that barrel. Right, you can see how it's like way bright. Right. Because it's sunny day brightness, but you can still see where the barrel is. You know that it's in the center. Now, if I put it on those rims further back, right, you can see how it completely, because it's smaller, completely, you know, it completely covers it up, right? But at close distance, at a man sized target, right, that's not an issue. However, I did find that the, the Hollis on the 507 ACSS uh, does improve upon this situation, okay? So, uh, putting this on the target, All right? So, so here's the thing: just because that chevron is smaller, and these are at the same brightness level, right? But because the chevron is smaller, and because you typically put it at the bottom, the, the way you're supposed to zero this is 25 yards at the bottom of the target, right? You're able to, you're able to see your targets because they're over your chevron, and also the chevron is smaller. So this is definitely a better option than this i think so this is like one of the key considerations right so these are actually at the same brightness level these are sunny day brightness but the 10 moa chevron is um is, is smaller so it's just le less of an issue let right, me i'm gonna go back and forth right back and forth all right you can see how that big 250 moa circle is helping me center this Right as I'm because I'm I'm looking behind the camera. I'm actually looking at this in my camera now, rather than through the gun itself. Right. So this is the other side of the camera. So is it from here, there, to there? All right. So so oh, there it is. There there it is. Okay. So um. I think I think that's kind of easy to see. You can see that that, that um, for night shooting the the that 10 MOA chevron with that big circle around it. And also what I'm finding is that because that big circle is going to wanna right 
you know, because it tends to be more brighter, you're, you're naturally going to want to get away from the circle. So that's, again, that's going to kind of force you to center, right? Because it's like, you know, that's, that's the most comfortable place to be in the center where you can see the chevron. But, you know, you know, when you get to the edge, like I'm at right now, you can see how it's like, oh, that's not very comfortable. Okay, yeah, that's a lot more comfortable. I want to get rid of the circle and just keep the chevron on the target. So uh, I think that that's... You know, that, 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 that's a, that's a, um, yeah, that's easy to see. You can easily see the benefit of this. Now, the other um, important consideration is that when you're carrying this, right, open reflex, you know, you're carrying in the host like this, that's basically a lint trap, okay? That's, and, and it's going to collect hair. That's going to collect all sorts of stuff in there. Um, so what happens a lot of times when you come out of the holster, right, and you come out and you extend, all right, what's going to happen is you can't see through the glass, right? Uh, you can't see through that glass. So what you do is you got two eyes, right? So when you when you come out and you can't see through that glass, right? And this, this is the one with the 32 mm circle. It makes no difference. I'm, I'm aiming at a tree right now. My left eye sees a tree. My right, my right eye uh, basically seeing that circle, okay? Um, and what happens is your brain combines the two images so you can test this out you can uh, you can do this with a rifle too right any 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 um, you know anything that has a red dot take a piece of painters tape cover the front of your of your red dot or of your optic uh, so that you cannot see through it right all you can see is the reticle through the back cover it through the front of it and basically aim this at, at a target and what's going to happen is your left eye is going to see the target your right eye is only going to be able to see the reticle because you can't see through the glass anymore and what you get, what the image that your brain is going to see is you're going to see the combination. You're going to see the target with your with the reticle on it. Okay, so that's why it's not an issue, right? That this collects lint, hair, and all sorts of other nasty stuff, um, you know, from from you know riding away uh, from riding around all day in the holster. Um, but this might be an issue, uh, you know, a reason why down the road, you know, you may want to go with the. Uh, you know, with the closed emitter, I know the Halasun uh, has, uh, I think, the 50, which one is it, the, the, the 510, no, I forget, one, one of them, they, they got a pistol optic that has um, uh, closed emitter, I think it's the 509, whatever, but it doesn't, but that does not offer the ACSS, so between the two, be, between having the choice of um, a closed reticle, right, uh, and having the ACSS, I'd rather have the ACSS. I am finding that it is a huge advantage, um, you know, both day and night, but especially at night, right? Right, you can see reticle there, so now it's getting even, even darker, right? I have to pop my glasses up so I can see, All right? So with this one here, you can see how that's like, Basically a big bright sun, and now that's dark, you can't even see that the, the target behind it. You can see this, you can see a man-sized target. Uh, that's not a problem, that's why I, I was actually carrying this around. Uh, where are you? No, I lost it, no, oh, there it is. Okay. Whereas this, 10 MOA is a much better option for shooting at night. Okay, so, so despite the fact that uh, that these are a lint trap, that's not a problem. Just use your left eye to see past it. Use your right eye, or you know, to look at the reticle. Or if you're left eye dominant, you know, use your left eye to see the reticle, right eye to see the target. Your brain combines the two. Okay. So while we got a little daylight, let's, let's put a couple rounds out of the barrel out of the way. So I did this test before, uh, basically I'm shooting out one-handed. I'm basically intentionally not using perfect presentation. I'm just going to be coming out like this. All right, so, so the purpose of this test is to see if you can find the reticle under less than perfect circumstance, right? When you're trying to hold somebody back or you're, you're, you know, you're, you're on a ladder or whatever on the roof or, or laying on the ground, you know, whatever, you come out of a holster. Uh, so if you're under, in, if, you, if you're shooting with less than perfect presentation, can you find this reticle and get bullets where you need, you know, on target where you need to get them? I'll put the ACSS in my left hand since I normally shoot right-handed, um, just to, you know, make it a little bit more challenging. 
So I'm going to call it out ACSS. I'm going to say Chevron or Circle, okay? So uh, Chevron. Circle. Chevron. Circle. Chevron. Circle. Chevron. I definitely got more hits with the Chevron, just because I could see it, right? Uh, when I was looking, when I was looking at that target, and I got a lot closer. Last time when I was shooting this, I was shooting this uh, when I did this test. I was at like a 30 feet. Now I think I'm at about uh, at about 15 feet. So I am I am a little bit closer. Um, so at the closer distance of issue, what the circle is, it's just I can't see the target because it's too small. It's the the, the that circle is completely overwhelming it. Whereas with the Chevron, you know, I was able to put this at the bottom and see it. Okay. So big difference between the two. That's blinding. Don't know where it is. You know, this goes to the bottom. So I can kind of see it. All right. Now you get to a bigger target, it's, it's even easier to see. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know if you guys were able to see it in the... In the camera, um, you know, but I definitely got a lot more hits with that Chevron uh, versus that uh, uh, the, the the circle. I think I was a little actually. I think I was a little faster today with the circle versus other times. And I think the reason was because once I got it and I, and I saw it on target, it's like I couldn't see the target anyway, so I I, I just pulled the trigger, you know, because it was just completely to uh, completely covering it up. Whereas with the Chevron, it seemed like I was a little slower, but but I think the reason was. Because I saw the chevron and then I intentionally went to the bottom of it, you know, and, and that's why I was able to get more hits. Um, that's not the way I did it in previous tests. In previous tests, as soon as I saw it, I just took the shot. Uh, today, I was actually trying to be a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more accurate, uh, trying to actually get the chevron to the bottom, um, you know, uh, to take a, a, a better shot. Um, because that's just the thing I was testing for today. So, um, I hope you guys found this video uh, helpful. Um, and like I said, for me. I mean, I've, I've made up my mind at this choice on my carry gun, the ACSS. Um, because here's the thing, shooting is a scene thing, okay? Uh, that, that's the main thing. And that's probably, you know, uh, other than, you know, I mean, first, yeah, it comes gun reliability. I, but I think the next uh, most important thing is, you know, can you see? Can you, can, can, can you put bullets where you want to put them? So, uh, you know, that's why um, I think that these, you know, I think that's why I think that, that, that almost all AR-15s today have optics on them, right? And that's why I think that uh, within the next, I don't know, five years, um, everything is gonna everything's gonna gravitate towards all pistols, um, you know, coming coming uh, optic ready. Because still, you know, at this point, um, you know, getting a uh, you know being a, buying a pistol so and, and getting it cut for a red dot is kind of like not always the case. You know, like with Glock, you gotta get a Glock MOS, but it's not the standard. I think that 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 um, um, op, you know an optic cut on pistols is going to be the standard within the next couple of years because it's just better. I mean, there's no question; it's just better, um, especially with this ACSS. You just come out and it's it's there. That big circle, that big 250 AMOA circle, solved the problem uh, that we were having with with fishing around for it, trying to find it. Right, that big circle. You find that you know as soon as you get in there, you see that circle. You know exactly where you gotta go. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think this is the solution that we were looking for. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you're not a member of the channel, please subscribe. I'll talk to you guys soon.